Hello again, this is Vlado from Avidilabs. In this video I will show you a case study for using Avidilabs calculator with the visual page part. It's uh, one of the most common ones and this example refers to a face identification with the software. So um, I'll turn on the actual drawing so you can see what I'm talking about. There you go. So imagine you have a customer, client, that says, look, we just bought a face identification, face recognition software, uh, which can uh, recognize people automatically on the fly in real time. And the manufacturer has told us that we need to have at least 30 pixels between the eyes of a people uh, seen by the camera and we will guarantee you face recognition or identification. So this is typical of a lot of face identification manufacturers. Somehow they will have to give you an idea what is the size of the face or the heads uh, that they need to have in order for their software to identify or recognize such a person positively. Some manufacturer will ask you to produce an image of maybe, I don't know, 30 pixels by 30 pixels for the headshot. But more accurate and probably more common is the required pixels between the eyes. Uh, and let's say in this case we've got a particular uh, example where the client says our software can identify if you've got at least 30 pixels between the eyes. And in this case let's assume uh, this is a practical uh, exercise where we need to install the camera 5 meters away from the place where we need to identify these people walking through the corridor perhaps or coming from the door or uh, whichever uh, area you want or maybe coming out of the lift. In any case we know that the, the camera needs to be installed at 5 meters away. So um, first thing that we need to do in order to use the calculator and in order to do properly we need to know which camera we are using. Uh, let's choose a camera with one of a 1.9 inch uh, sensor. Uh, that means the sensor itself is 7.2 by 4.5 mil. You don't have to remember this. This is already built in the VidLabs calculator, which we will see in a second. Uh, but let's also uh, clarify that we have decided to use HD uh, sensor. That means the number of pixels are 1920 by 1080. Uh, and we chose to have a, a lens, very focal lens of 3 to 9 millimeters. Now, why did I choose this camera? This is an example, of course, can be any camera. But typically, I, I obviously will use some reasoning behind. And in this instance, the larger the sensor is with the lesser pixel count, the larger the pixels will be, which means the low light sensitivity of that camera will be better. So instead of using a sensor of the same size at 4K resolution, I prefer in this instance to use 1920 by 1080 for the sake of, of a case study, but also explaining why I'm, I'm choosing this. So this is like practical, practical case that is useful to know the reasoning behind it. So uh, uh, the large sensor of one, one over 1.9 inch is reasonably large, but if you're using HD instead of 4K, which you can, most of the cameras these days will offer 4K, the, se the pixels will be much bigger, which means I can see comfortably with that camera even in lower light assuming this is recognizing people walking inside an office area, inside a ground floor of a, a building, a foyer or whatever. And um, I typically would choose in that case um, a full body camera that will allow me to choose separate lens and I will choose perhaps the best lens I know of. Uh, in this case 3 to 9 millimeter varifocal lens is pretty common. So let's start from there. So what do we need to do is there is average um, uh, 65 millimeter distance between human eye. This is something you can find on, on, uh, on the internet and this is typical uh, distance between human eyes. So let's assume we are using 65 as a starting point. Uh, then what we do is we need to find out what is this uh, at 5 meters distance equivalent to in pixel density. That's easily done by knowing uh, and dividing 1000 millimeters, which is one meter width, with 65 millimeters, which is the actual uh, distance between the eyes, that's 15.4 times. So in other words, in one meter, we can position 
15.4 pairs of eyes next to each other, so to speak. And if that is the case, by, by knowing what is the software requirement of 30 pixels between the eyes, when we multiply that by the 15, we get about 461 pixels per meter. So that's how we find out the pixels per meter. So that's reasonably easy, but I just want to uh, highlight here, do not confuse this with the standards for face identification, even though we can work on that. But standards typically like IEC 62676-4 requires 250 pixels per meter. Uh, we say through our video labs calculator and through Australian addendum to the standards that this should be at least 350 pixels per meter. But this is nothing to do with that because this is to do with what the manufacturer requires. Because manufacturer has asked for 30 pixels between the eyes, we from there derive what is the pixel density to produce that. And as you can see, this simple maths tells me that uh, equivalent to uh, 65 millimeter at 5 meters distance uh, is 461 pixels per meter. And this actually three lines show you how that is obtained. So now using that, we can actually start our video labs calculator. So let me connect now to the video labs calculator. And this is the default screen usually that we have on the video labs calculator. So what we are saying here that let's choose the camera first. So always with the visual calculator, you need to put the values for the camera that you're using in terms of sensor size and pixel count. One over 1.9 inch. So if you scroll this, you basically come to that sensor size, so you don't have to enter manually unless you know it. And let's say in this case we are having, this is 1 over 1.9 inch, as you can see here at the bottom. So the 1 over 9 inch sensor is 7.2 millimeters horizontal and 4.5 vertical. Now let's leave this 1920 by 1080 because that's the sensor pixel count that I know this camera has since I've ordered it, let's say, to be like that. So we've started properly. We define the image sensor dimensions and we define the pixel count and aspect ratio. Aspect ratio you don't have to worry because all you do is just enter horizontal and vertical pixels. Now let's go to the distance to the scene. Because this is not a red outline, that means this is not locked. This cell is locked. Because of that, we can't change it. So if I scroll with the finger there, I'm scrolling now, you, which you can't see, you can't actually change it. But I can change this, which is free to change. And this is why we now need to enter here 5 meters. So we can either enter it by double clicking and entering 5 meters, which is the new version 2 of the VidLabs calculator that allows you to enter any of these by double clicking and entering any number you want. Or you can also enter if that number is already in the pre entered table, you can by scrolling get the depth number 5, in this case 5 meter distance. So what now we said is that we calculated that we need to have 461 pixels per meter, like happens to be very close to it. But before we change this, see if we change now the actual pixel density, which we can to anything we want, as you can see, only the distance changes because that is not locked. So what we need to do is we need to lock the actual uh, distance once we set it to where the camera will be installed. So again, double clicking on the distance, enter it 5. Sorry, 5. Now hold one second and lock it. So now we can change the focal length to whatever we want. But we are not going to now know what le focal length we need because we need to achieve 461 pixels per meter density to get the, foc the software to work properly. What we do now, see in VideoLabs calculator, you can change any value as long as not, it is not locked. So if we double click now on the pixel density, uh, which was 480, I will now enter here 461, which is the pixel density, if you remember, we calculated. So if I click enter, that tells me now See, change the focal length to 8.64 millimeters. And obviously it changed accordingly the horizontal angle of view, the scene width, the scene height. So this is the actual focal length lens that needs to be set on the camera 
which is which has this sensor with this pixel count in order to achieve face identification and recognition by the software so this is again not standard recognition as we probably would do uh, another example so 8.64 is the uh, focal length required so one little thing here to explain with the actual very focal lenses as you probably would know if you already if you have already installed uh, some cameras in cctv uh, typically they would say let's say three to nine millimeters like we chose a very focal three to nine mil or three to twelve whatever it is but you will hardly know what focal length setting the actual levers are to be put so you don't really know whether it's 864 or not so if you can't do that that way then what i suggest is the easiest way or the most accurate way would be look at the scene width it says here 4.16 meters let's say four meters roughly so what you need to do is then uh, the area you're looking at five meters away where the people will be passing through for you to identify the face obviously the camera i didn't mention but is understandable should be as low as possible to reasonably see people face uh, on rather than from very high in which case you won't be able to recognize of course um, so you're positioning the camera five meters away you are marking four meters left and right from that area where the people are passing at five meters distance and once you uh, adjust the focal length to see this sharply that should be indicated uh, by indirectly by the focal length basically you've set it up to about 8.6 millimeters but that's how you can do it if you don't know what is the actual focal length really on the on the lens because most lenses do not have that some cameras that have clever and built-in very focal lenses you can actually set that in the software of the camera setting you actually can slide the setting to 864 or enter by numbers 860 or 86 whatever is closest to 864 and the camera will adjust the lens to that focal length if you can't see this then you can uh, actually if you don't have that function you can set it by knowing what is the width of the view so there you go this is the actual solution for a such case study and i'll just go back to the next slide just to explain this again with the visual uh, thing so as you can see we first started with uh, choosing a camera then we chose a sensor well we chose a camera with the resolution and then we chose focal length three to nine uh, so that means we are actually covering that 8.64 which we calculated uh, because obviously if this is a three to six mil and you're calculating 8.6 you need to choose a different very focal length so uh, basically we found out the pixel density by dividing a meter by 65 millimeters which is 15.4 times we multiply that by 30 pixels between the eyes we'll get 461 pixels per meter then we use that in the formula which you don't need to worry about but this is the formula that is hidden in the video labs calculator that calculates for you 8.6 well in our case was 8.64 if you want to be more precise but really second decimal is not that critical so 8.6 millimeter is a lens that is needed to actually see and recognize identify the people through the software so the last slide that i want to i would like to share is um, the summary of this from here you also find what is the horizontal field of view and we also find out that actually as you as you saw in the calculator vidlabs calculator four meters is the width of view so let's go back again to the vidlabs calculator the horizontal angle of view see the calculator also calculates it's 45.2 degrees in this case and the scene width is 4.16 like we said before so that practically means uh, at that five meters distance required for the uh, identification through the software four meters width means probably even up to four people can pass next to each other shoulder to shoulder at the same point and if the software is capable it may have four people automatically recognizing in real time uh, faces and that's how you can use VideoLabs calculator for one of the simplest methods uh, by entering whatever number you know and changing the others to get either the focal length or maybe pixel density or other way around I hope uh, this is clear and uh, 
please uh, look at the other videos that I'll, uh, I'll be putting in there with other many different examples and I'm sure that you will get uh, clips of it and if you have any questions by all means feel free to uh, ask and I hope to see you in the next video.